Good morning, Shalom, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, Jonathan here with a shorter daily update. Um, it is uh, the morning, 7 a.m. on the 15th of October in Israel. The sun is up for another day and unfortunately still at war with Hamas. I'd like to focus on the current situation. During the night there were rockets fired at Tel Aviv and southern Israel. Uh, there was still, there is still combat in and around in the northern part of the Gaza Strip and the IDF continues to operate above uh, the Gaza Strip and to attack different military targets belonging to Hamas. Now, we have called on the civilian population, and this isn't news, we have called on the civilian population in Gaza City and the northern part of the Gaza Strip to evacuate south, south of the Gaza River. And that isn't news. But what is news is that Hamas has both issued warnings to their civilians not to evacuate. And when people didn't listen to those warnings of Hamas, they have actually stopped civilians and they have stopped convoys of Gazan civilians trying to flee from the situation and listening to our warnings, uh, knowing that they are much better off south of the Gaza, Gaza River than staying in the northern part. Uh, there's a picture here on this side where you can see an aerial footage of two vehicles, these two vehicles here, that's a zoom in, and this is the same two vehicles and you can see the line of civilian vehicles try, try, trying to go from north to south being blocked by two other vehicles. And that corresponds with intelligence and information we have from various sources that Hamas is indeed actively preventing civilians from leaving the south. Now if that isn't the most sinister and vile use of civilians during war, I don't know what is, but it again goes to show the lack of uh, any value for human life with, uh, with the terrorist organization Hamas. Now, there have been reports of a convoy or vehicles of Gazans that were going from north to south on Salah Adin Road, which is the main street in the Gaza Strip. Here it goes from north to south, and there were reports of Gazan casualties. Now, I'd like to say something about reports coming out of the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip, there aren't two governments there, there's one government. The government is Hamas. So when the so-called Gaza Ministry of Health issues information, the amount of people killed, if they were armed people or not, if they were men or women or children, obviously that information is authorized by Hamas and it, it's okay for release by Hamas and it would serve the purposes of Hamas. So when you get information, if you're a journalist or if you're just listening to what's going on and you get information from the Gaza Strip, please be very, very skeptical of the veracity and ask yourself why was this information disseminated and how does it serve Hamas and its propaganda purposes. And I'd like to show you something uh, this is footage made by local Gazans of that incident. And you see the explosion there? We're going to zoom in. You know what? We're going to show it again, just so you can see it better. Vehicles traveling, some guys filming, and then all of a sudden, a big explosion. Now, you can't see it now, but we've zoomed in. Actually, we haven't. Uh, people who know how to do it uh, around the world, forensic analysis and other people, visual imagery experts. They've zoomed in and they've enlarged the area of the explosion. That's one of those pictures. And here's another picture, a little bit zoomed out, of the same very incident. They've basically isolated the frames and looked and wanted to understand where the explosion started and what it looks like. Now, I'm no forensic expert. I wouldn't be able to say if this is a roadside IED or if this is a strike from above. But what I am able to say with confidence, because we have asked, is that the IDF did not purposely strike in that area. There was no targeting of vehicles, there was no targeting of civilians, specifically because we want the civil, we don't target civilians anyhow, but specifically because we wanted people to go south. So it makes no sense for the IDF to have done it. Who would want to stop those same civilians? The same organization that did the roadblocks, Hamas. Now, 
Again, this isn't conclusive. What is conclusive is that we for sure didn't strike on purpose. It may have been some kind of a freak accident, which I doubt, but I think that this visual imagery, and by the way, both BBC and uh, other media outlets and many on Twitter have looked at this and analyzed it, and there are questions about what happened here and how that uh, explosion occurred. And again, any information coming out of the Gaza Strip authorized by Hamas should be treated with extreme caution and suspicion because it serves their propaganda purposes. We are deployed, and with this I will conclude our briefing, we are deployed along the Gaza Strip uh, with our ground forces and we are preparing ourselves for the next stage of operations. We again call on the people of northern Gaza, Gaza City and all the northern environment in this area here to go south, listen to our warnings. We are saying that there's going to be significant military activities here and we want, we urge the civilians to evacuate for their own safety. And I think it is appalling that Hamas isn't letting people to evacuate. Let that sink in and again in the bigger picture of things who is on the right side, who is trying to do the right thing, and who is cynically using civilians and civilian infrastructure time and again for the vile purposes. We are trying to do the right thing, and the next stage of operations will be enhanced operations against Hamas until we will dismantle Hamas and its military capabilities. If you like it, share it, stay connected to our outlets, and I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.